Opening News with Dan Rather substituting for Walter Cronkite. Good evening. Three days after the eruption of Mount St. Helens in southwest Washington state, imponderables dust the air like volcanic ash. Ten persons are known dead, 71 are missing, and one estimate is that it will take more than $150 million just for road and bridge repair. It is an event that defies superlatives. One geologist said today, there is no record in geology in the last 4,000 years of anything like this happening before. The tremendous lateral blast is unprecedented. And for one photographer, it was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Gary Shepard reports on these remarkable pictures. Gary Lee Rosenquist had camped out overnight at Bear Meadow, eight miles northeast of Mount St. Helens. 27 years old and unemployed, he was hoping to get some good pictures of the mountain to help launch a career in photography. He got off to a good start. This sequence of photos was taken during the first 60 seconds of the mountain's eruption, beginning shortly after 8.30 on Sunday morning. Rosenquist and four friends barely made it out, jumping into their car and driving as fast as they could with volcanic ash and gases, as well as rocks and mud moving up rapidly behind them. They escaped with their lives and with these spectacular photos of the mountain's worst eruption in more than 30,000 years. Gary Shepard, CBS News, Seattle. President Carter left the White House today to fly to the Pacific Northwest where he'll look at the damage caused by Mount St. Helens. Before leaving for Portland, the president declared Washington state a major disaster area, releasing federal relief funds. Officials say the eruption already has spewed almost as much rock and ash as Vesuvius dumped on ancient Pompeii. The White House also announced today the president will visit Miami later at an undisclosed date to assess the damage in that city's racial explosion. Weather makes it problematical how much Mr. Carter will see at Mount St. Helens. Terry Drinkwater has that story. At the command posts, it was a frustrating day. Rescue helicopters couldn't fly because Mount St. Helens was shrouded in dense rain clouds. Scores are still sent to the low volcano, safe but anxious to be airlifted out. The rain and the runoff from the melting snow on the hot mountain is now bringing some rivers towards flood stage again. But geologists today were forecasting a quiet period ahead for the mountain. We're hopeful at this point that the stresses that have been building up have been released and that we're at least in for a, a, a period of regrouping without any particular danger at the moment. Last Sunday, when it blew, two other geologists were flying directly above what is now the crater and saw it all, Keith and Dorothy Stoffel. The whole top of the north side just began to um, uh, ripple and kind of uh, churn up, and everything to the north of that just slid away, just completely slid away, and within seconds after that a huge blast occurred the clouds as as they rose what happened then? um they were billowing up almost like in big pillow sort of structures and at that point of course we were i was terrified personally and we weren't sure that we were going to make it out of that situation at all to the east in yakima washington residents weren't sure until today how they were going to get out of their situation volcanic ash everywhere but tonight, the mountain is just spewing steam. The worst of the ash problem may at last be over. Terry Drinkwater, CBS News, Portland. The Agriculture Department says it's too early to tell about the damage Mount St. Helens will do to crops and livestock, but just about any place in the area, life has changed dramatically since Sunday. For example, look at Ritzville, Washington, with Harold Dow. Yeah, Words just can't describe Ritzville, Washington. Three days after Mount St. Helens blew her top, smothering this central Washington community under five inches of volcanic ash. It looks like the aftermath of a brutal winter storm, but it's mid-May and the dust is much harder to remove than snow. Graders, snow plows were all pressed into service. Despite their unusual dilemma, residents manning shovels and brooms seem to be in good spirits. <laughs> Haven't seen anything like it ever. <laughs> I don't know. I tell you, I never want to see it again. The volcanic dust storm hit suddenly last Sunday afternoon. One minute it was sunny and bright. The next minute it looked like night. Ash falling everywhere. Well, the community did a great job. We had about 2,000 people stranded. They took them in their home, their churches, the schools full. We fed them good. Uh, no problem with food and medicine. And some of those who were stranded here feel the same way. They couldn't wait to leave. 
incredible. I couldn't believe it. Um, it was scary. You know, you couldn't see in front of you, and, and you started breathing the stuff, and of course had no idea whether or not it was poison or harmful. In this convoy are some of the 2,000 people who have been stranded here since Sunday. Law enforcement officials have decided it is safe for groups of travelers to go. Everyone is leaving Ritzville in a cloud of dust. Harold Dow, CBS News, Ritzville, Washington.